Tell your mother that next time she should let you stay long. Oh, I'd love to. But you know she doesn't like me staying out all night. She blows up. <laughs> no, mothers are all alike. Oh. Afraid we're going to stray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do say hello to your brother for me. Oh, I can't. Bye, go. Sarah. Goodbye. We better be going. Your mother isn't the only one who can blow up, you know. Oh. Bye. 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 Girls? Something like that. But more like a memory. <laughs> that can happen. When you get to be my age, that's about all there is left. And there's not too much you can do with them. What kind of memories you got going? You name it, kid. I got them all. Artists first. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, young fellow, we've been on the trail together for two days now, and you seem a decent sort. You told me who you are, but not where you're from. Waverly. Missouri. Ah, pretty town, Waverly. High as an eagle on the cliffs dominating the mighty Missouri. <laughs> you a poet? Oh, anyone from Missouri has a touch of the poet or the artist, I think. I'm from Galting. Sheriff of Davis County. Sheriff? Right. Missouri's a long way off. What are you doing around here? Working, son. What kind of work? You following someone? <laughs> you newspaper reporters are all the same. More curious than women are. Don't worry. This can be off the record. Trouble, son? No. I've got to ride down to the Mexican border. Looking for General Shelley. He crossed the frontier there with his whole army. He's crazy. He didn't want to surrender to the Yankees. You know the war's over? Not for him, it isn't. He's got too much of that southern blood to give in. Yeah, it's him, all right. A brave man, but thick-headed. Yeah. Joe Shelley. Didn't you say your name is George Shelley? That's right. It's my uncle. <sighs> my old man's brother. All right, what are you looking for? Weapons. Tricky business. I see. You going after Mexican smugglers? No, more after Indians. Not every rifle goes over the border, you know. And that's even worse. Much worse. <laughs> Over there. Aim above her. I want her alive. You'll have to take care of them, young fella. They're a little out of range for me. talk. The only thing I found out is that she has to go to Laredo. She's very frightened. She must have relatives or someone waiting for her. I think so. She wants to get on the road in a hurry. And if we're going somewhere else, she'll head on alone. Girl, I like plain talking, and I think we have a right to an explanation. These men won't waste much time getting back. We ruined their little game, and they're going to try to make us pay for it. So, if you expect us to go on helping you, speak up. Otherwise, you can start writing now. We saved your life, and we don't even know your name. I'm Sarah. Sarah Bowman from Texas. From San Antonio. My father was in Mexico. A few days ago, he sent some papers saying they were important. Both my mother and my brother were murdered. I wasn't because I was away from the house. I was with a girlfriend. Our house was in the country, 12 miles from the nearest town. When I got home, it was all over. They must have been there for the documents and they... Torture my mother, rather, to get them. 
And they won't stop there. for two days. And today, they finally caught up with me. My father will be in Laredo now, and I have to get to him. He's all I've got left in the world. If those papers are really so important, why did he send them to you? They were to be registered in San Antonio, then sent to him. My brother was supposed to do all that. And now... What are the papers all about? I'm sorry. That's your business. We'll ride with you as far as Laredo, little girl, all right? Now, a smile, I think. <laughs> yeah, I knew you could do it. You look much prettier that way. <laughs> Come on, let's go. There's a lot of road before we get to Jimmy Martinez's place on the border. We better stay there for a few days. this kind of traveling to do? Yes, indeed, Sonny. Two or three days. We gotta get through the snow country. Then we'll go a little faster. This is the hard way to get there, but the shortest. Hey, don't tell me the two of you are tired. <laughs> That's nonsense. I'm fine, and I'm 30 years older than you. Well, I'm 30 years younger than you, and I'm tired. Guess you're just not old enough. Why'd you carry a coat? Don't need them and don't like them. I do just fine with a rifle. I was in the 7th Cavalry when I got out. I just saw it off the barrel. It's handier. I feel naked without my little cold in its holster, believe me. How about little Sarah? Can you fire a gun? Sure, my brother taught me. It's a crack shot. We'll camp here. It's well protected. Tomorrow we'll have an easy ride to Martinez Hotel. Now, when we get to Papa Martinez, call him Jimmy, by the way. Tell him your brother and sister, understand? And George, if they ask you, go ahead and say you're a newspaper man. You're going to Laredo with her on family business, right? Right, Marshal. With the two of you, I feel secure, protected. Oh, and by the way, you two, don't call me Marshal ever. I'm in disguise, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boss, we found nothing. The two of them wouldn't talk, so we just made sure they never would. Just two? Not the girl. She escaped. We nearly caught up with her when two men helped her get away again. Idiots. Don't worry, we're keeping an eye on her. They're heading toward the frontier. I don't want them to reach Martinez. I want either the documents or the girl alive and well. Get going. Fast.
on, go call Ned. Hurry up. You come along with me. Ned! Ned! Ned? Where are you, Ned? Come on out, you lazy good for nothing. Are you in there? Ned. Thank you. It was getting awfully hot. Thank you. Come on, Ned. Jimmy wants to see you right away up on the roof. All right, all right. I'll run like the wind. Go. Oh, move, will you? You better take a look for yourself then, mister. There's a lot of dust. Maybe it's Indians. No, it wouldn't be. Impossible. Well, what if it is? What do we do? I've never seen Indians around here before. Better just wait them out. Pretty soon they'll be here and we'll see who they are. Anyway, where's that sawed-off rut of yours? He can see like a hawk. Ned, where the hell were you? What a time to take a bath. Whenever someone needs you, you're not around. Come on, come on, move. Take a look out there. What do you make of it? Well, what do you see? Well, they're riding fast, for sure. Americans? Mexicans? I don't know. Indians? No. No band of Indians would ever come galloping up like that. They prepare in daytime and attack by night. Ah, it ain't Indians, at least. Figure out who it is and come and tell me right away, right? Sure, Jimmy. I looked for Ned, but he's disappeared. When he's nervous, he usually paces back and forth underneath your bed. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> I was sure they weren't Indians. Indians always prepare at night and attack at dawn. Why always at dawn? Well... Because they attack at dawn. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. This evening. What about that dust, Thompson? Could that be the people we're waiting for? No. You know something, Jefferson? You ought to forget why we're here and just try to act natural. When it's time to move, you'll know about it. For the moment, just take things nice and easy. Don't worry about it, Thompson. I'm a man who can keep control good inside. You want to know the truth, you're the man that should keep a lid on his temper. You know, you ought to take that holster off for once in your life, you poor idiot. Thompson, you ever seen me without my gun belt? No. But there's supposed to be a first time for everything, they say. <laughs> By the way, Jefferson, stay away from Adeline. <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> Private grounds, eh? The little Mexican bitch has pierced your heart, right, Thompson? <laughs> you are an idiot. Tell me, who is the only person who will be able to help us when we need it? Oh, I get it. <laughs> you mean her. <laughs> Why do you drink so much, Adeline? Think it's bad for people. It turns them ugly. Are you afraid of losing good clients if I get old too quickly? Uh, it has nothing to do with that, and you know it. I'm still in love with you, Adeline. We should stop your carrying on and flirting with Thompson. He promised he'd take me away from this filthy, horrible hole. He promised he would bring me where I need to go. I'm a singer. I... I must get away. Yeah, I know I'm not worth anything. I've lost all I've had. This place is all I've left in the world. But it could be worse. We have what we need. And besides, I'm so much in love with you still, like I told you. 
If you really loved me, you wouldn't make me stay here and be a servant. And what of our son? Because there's no accompaniment. How about that? I don't know how to play it. It's my husband's. It belonged to his father. He used it in church, I suppose. Oh, I don't really know. Sing some more, Adeline. Your voice is wonderful. You don't need anybody to play. Don't think you can make fun of me. I was a great artist, and don't you forget it. And now move. Get out of here. <laughs> Whatever you like. But I'm telling you the truth. You're wasted here. Well, any news of that cloud of dust, Papa Martinez? No, if there was anything, Ned would have told me. The eating's too good here. I'll wind up fat as a pig. You don't have to play around, Mr. Jefferson. I know I can't cook worth a damn, but thanks for the compliment anyway. I never thought I'd end my days among frying pans. I did everything wrong. It happens, though. Too often. At my age, there's no use looking for the happy ending anymore, young fella. You just try to get along with everyone and everything. Anna, be careful. Of what? Oh. <laughs> Mama, you know what? I don't like that guy all dressed in black like a crow. It isn't up to you to like clients. Is it up to Anna? What on earth are you saying? If you saw the way she was looking at him, you wouldn't ask. Anna. Anna. Hurry and get the girl to the hotel. And don't come after me. Right? Michael, what are you doing out here? Get her inside, will you? Get everyone back inside. Hurry. And take care of my sister. She's hurt. Of course. down, you idiot. It was you who shot him in the first place. All right. Sam shouldn't have shot the man. But I wish you'd tell me why you didn't want to go to that hotel. We could have waited for the girl there. It would have worked out easier. Listen, Bill, orders are orders. And I'm the one who's given them. I told you I was willing to go along with that. Put those back and let's go. And remember, he's not alone. out? Yeah, I'll tell you later. How's Sarah? She's all right, in the hotel. Let's keep our eyes open, young fellow. We'll be getting surprises from inside, too. Soldiers! Hey, the soldiers are coming! And the screen! Hey, come on out! Oh! Get water for yourselves and the horses. We're moving in five minutes.
I'd advise anyone who's traveling to go no further. The Indians are on the warpath, as of last night. I've got to get this mail through. That's up to you, Slim. Travel at your own risk. At the moment, we're a limited force. We can't be everywhere. Well, you've been warned. There are a lot of Indians and damn few of us. Afternoon. Can I help you, sir? No, no, thanks. I look very old, but I'm not. You should meet my grandfather. <laughs> oh, these terrible Indians. And tomorrow morning, I've got an important conference in San Antonio. And by the way, I am Dr. Gordon, Dr. Jonas Gordon. I'm Jimmy Martinez, sir. You will be very comfortable I here. hope the so. Very I good. hope so. I hope so. Bonjour. A pleasure. The name is Paradine. Quinn Paradine of New Orleans. He the one we want. Yes, let's go. The Indians are becoming a terrible nuisance. We must do something about them once and for all. May I present Miss Simpson? Sure, that isn't the juiciest bit of this. <laughs> I'm afraid the doctor is impassioned on the subject of music. He's been talking on and on for hours of concertos and sonatas. And now he can show off as a performer. We're in for it, if I'm not mistaken. Bumser. Platoon! Formation! Don't just stand there. Go and help. Anna, Michael, go on, help those men with the baggage. Forward, help! You could have knocked, you know. You'd better give me those papers. It could be unpleasant if you should happen to mislay them. Don't worry, they're in a safe place. And if someone finds them, our plans will go up in smoke. And I'd be the only one in trouble if they were in your hands. You forget I still love life. No, I'll hold on to them. I'm afraid I'd double-cross you. Who's the young fellow? Something a long, long time ago. You loved him. Quinn, dear, don't be an idiot. Supposing I were jealous. More enchanting. You must never touch a lady without her permission. Now get out. And don't forget, we came to this place for a purpose. It would be nice to be able to play so well. You're the company yourself. <laughs> yes. I sang that many times. I'm going to ask him to play for you. No, no. Let him go on. He's very good. I wonder why he became a doctor instead of a musician.
Well, by the way, my dear, who were the two men who came here with the girl? The younger one's a reporter. The girl's his sister. I'm not really sure who the other is. You're pretty interested, aren't you? Curiosity only. Well, have you decided, will you leave your husband and come away with me? Yes, I will. I only hope I can trust you. Mind if I have a drink with you, gentlemen? Our pleasure, miss. Beer? Whiskey. Whiskey. A girl after my own heart. Let's have a little toast. Here's to old friendships. And to the pleasure that the company of a woman, as beautiful as you are, brings us. plays wonderfully. I just love music. What kind of music? Any kind. If played well. What does it say? It's not a very good sky for reading smoke signals. As far as I can make out, it doesn't look good for us. How are you, my dear? I think I know what's troubling you. But you must eat. Now, supposing I play something for you. All right? Come on, go to the table and try to eat. No, I don't know who he is. He got on the coach at Santa Elena. He's heading for San Antonio. Never saw the girl before, either. Oh, we know the girl. Me? No, not you, George. I meant I know her. <laughs> hey, trying to kill me with kindness? <laughs> Michael, you do that again and I'll cut your tongue out. Hey, you stupid midget, bring me something to drink and make it better than you are. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Never did like Colts. Not my style. It's much better if you don't play around with them. I hope you don't mind. Is that all? Shh. Get up to bed this instant, Michael. Hurry now, it's late. Go on, will you? Can I get you some more? Thank you. Good night, Michael. You haven't eaten anything. I'm not hungry, thanks. Oh, well, you should try to eat something. I said go to bed. It's about time you sang something for us. I'm sure the doctor would love to accompany you. I give you Adeline, ladies and gentlemen. Well, oh, I don't come have on, anything. my dear. Don't wait to be coaxed. Yes, 
it was a joke that night your love was a magic Pretty clever, Jefferson, don't you? Well, you are just acting like an idiot. And now you've got to stop it. Because if you don't, I'll murder you like a dog. I don't give a damn if I need you or not. <laughs> you never even heard of Quinn Paradine before he came here, you bastard. Now you're trying to worm your way in with him. Good. Now get out and don't let me see you for a few hours. And the minute you feel like acting stupid again, think of the $200,000 we might lose. <laughs> We won't have him around. Everyone ready? Yeah. All right. I'll be there in an hour. Right. Oh, I've got some news for you. There's a fellow in there from Missouri, a marshal. He's carrying an order for the arrest of a certain Henri Magnol. I bet he doesn't even know it's really you. Possible. Find out anything else? Mm, no. You sure? Sure. Well, what do you do, boss? Keep on going? Yes, follow the plan. I took the papers, George. 
They weren't safe in the stable. Just as well. I was getting worried. With those Indians around, we should keep our eyes open. And they're just on the outside. Thomas, who do you suspect in here? You don't have to answer. I know who you mean. Don't be too sure. I'm not, I can tell you. Since I don't know them, I'll have to catch them red-handed. Smuggling guns. Right. We've been on their trail for months. There must be 60 rangers involved in this operation from Laredo to San Antonio. This thing was organized up top. Ah, and it's really front page stuff. That's right, son. Front page and some pretty big names. I'm afraid I have to tell you Julia's one of the gang. So, let us start talking. Julia? <laughs> I haven't seen her in years. We're from the same town. We grew up side by side. It was all very normal. Then, we fell in love. I had the, I had the marriage license in my pocket. Then she ran away, and I'll tell you this much. It's not true about time healing all wounds. Whose turn is it up on the roof? Huh? Papa Martinez. Outside for a breath of fresh air, and someone hit me on the head with the handle of his gun. I get whoever it was, that son of a bitch. Well, sure looks like this isn't a good place for getting fresh air at night. Two of us better take a look around. You try upstairs. Sarah? Sarah? Is everything all right? Yes, I'm fine. Only I'm sure there was someone under my window a little while ago. We're keeping a watch. Good night. Good night. The two charges should go off at the same time. Then gallop around the building and keep firing your guns. We're going to be needing a hell of a lot of confusion. I'll take care of the girl. I think it's stupid. All we have to do is blow everything up. There's no easier way of getting the girl. And remember one thing. The sheriff and the other tall one will be keeping a close watch on her. You just mind your own damn business. You do what you're told and shut up if you want your share. And besides, we'll have help from inside. Oh, from who? The less you all know, the better. And wait till I get back, or till you see the signal. Well, I still think it's stupid. I remember when you used to be glad to see me. I do, too. That was some time ago. George, I've always loved you. It sounds like a lie, I know. But it's the truth, I swear it. I'm going, I'm going home now. No, wait, please. I know what you're thinking. But that man isn't anything to me. I can't explain it. You've just got to believe it. It's all over. George. Please, darling. Kiss me. Take care of things down here. No, 
I'll take care of it. Shame. I'm afraid the conference in San Antonio is definitely going to have to do without me. Nobody's ever seen you. You little brat. Women. Fire! Fire! The stable's on fire! All right, Sarah? I think so. Come on, let's get back. George, look out! George, watch out! Come on now, it's all over. There. That's a good Thanks, Ned. Pleasure. You feel up to riding? I'll try. Good girl. There. Up you go. Oh, damn bullet. <coughs> there it is. No, that didn't hurt, did it? Pretty, isn't it? You want it for a souvenir? Uh, no, thanks. I have enough already. <laughs> By the way, who is attacking us? Four no goods. Four? Yes, two of them are dead. And the other two? They got away. You want to know the truth? <laughs> They're dead, too. Sarah! What the hell happened? She wounded? No, just scared. <sighs> Sad, that's all. Uh, and what the hell happened to you? No, nothing. Just a scratch. Well, how about it? Shall we finish up? 
You, young fella. Pick up any bullets on the way home? Not for the moment, Doc. Sorry to disappoint you. Sit down here. Let's see that arm. the horses have run away. Someone's got to. I'll go look for them. That's better, sir. I'll go with you. George, remember. Keep a lookout behind you. True, monsieur. But at times, you have to learn to keep a lookout uh, in front, too. The fire's out. We almost wound up his ashes, but we did it. What happened to the girl? Let me tell you. Someone here inside the house hit Sarah on the head and lowered her out the window to his partners, who are the same men that attacked us. From the inside, eh? You mean one of us? That's right. What? You mean that one of us has been in alliance with those bandits? No, it's not possible. Never mind, we'll talk about it later. Get after those horses. Yeah, the horses are more important now. We'd better start. After you. George, it's pretty late. Where are you two going? We're just going for a little ride by moonlight. Alone? Alone. The horses ran off toward the hills. That way. here and keep your eyes open. I don't trust that Frenchie. And besides, everyone seems to have forgotten there are Indians around here. You can trust me. Good boy. <laughs> That's what really happened, darling. Yes, I just heard it. Frenchie said it to that woman he's with. It's happening tonight. I don't know for sure, but in my opinion, he's the one who hit Miss Sarah last night. Well, what do you think about it? Tell it again. I didn't quite understand something. Tell me again what you heard. What was there between you and Julia? I want to know. Monsieur, curiosity killed the cat, you know. Young man, when I ask a question, I expect an answer. You got the wrong young man and the wrong question, Frenchie. I don't take orders. Bon ami, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm going to have to murder you. It's still a little early to find out which of the two of us is going to die. You fool, are you afraid? I think a little thing like that worries me. Hey! Indian! I've seen Indians. Are you sure? Or where? Down there. About a hundred, I'd say. Ha! Till the next round, Paradine. Yes, sir, mon ami. I don't see anything. Where are they? Here, right behind you. With a bullet in the muzzle. Not near as bad as a machine gun, Thompson, but enough to murder you. Me? Why? You wanted to cut me out, didn't you? Get together with Paradine over the girl. You're pretty damn anxious to be rid of me. Rid of you? What the... What are you saying? I say I should act alone. Make a better deal than you ever would. Oh! <laughs> Tell you, 
I saw them last night. They were in here. Shall I tell you something, Julia? Without them, I'm no longer responsible for your life. Quinn? If you're not responsible for my life, then I assure you, yours isn't worth a damn either. Get them back here. You can find them. Do you want your documents, Shelley? Or the ones the girl has? At the moment, I want mine. You'd be rather upset if someone else found them, huh? How are you feeling? Oh, much better, thank you. I'm glad. Why don't you all come into the kitchen and help my husband? He's making one of his special dishes. It's an occasion. Uh, can I be of any help? Of course. Maybe some music. Certainly, as soon as I finish this chapter. Thompson had to leave last night. Unexpectedly. And you helped him pack, I suppose. The man is a friend of mine, Mr. Quinn. He authorized me to represent him in business deals. What deals? Well, as far as I can tell, you're in the middle of two. Oh, really? Quit it. I'm on to everything you know. The guns and Miss Sarah. I tell you, I found out all about it. You found this out all alone? Or did Thompson tell you before he went? I did. When do we start? It's a bad idea to stay here too much longer. No load of guns, no money. I've made sure of that. And the meeting with the Indians is for tomorrow. I know that. One of my men was supposed to be here yesterday. You're a man, but I'm waiting for the... A load of weapons, eh? The wagons will be stopping a few miles from here. I'm not running the risk of having someone find arms worth $200,000 aboard. Or would you prefer that the marshal find us right there? The marshal? What marshal? <laughs> That's one thing you didn't find out, eh? The man with the wounded arm. But I imagine he's here for us. We've got to get rid of him, Quinn. Of course we do. It's the only possible way of concluding this business. The only way. I was wondering, why did Thompson leave? Never mind. What of the girl? She's with those two. We get rid of them, and we've got her. When today? This evening. What are you drinking to, Quinn? <laughs> oh, yeah. The end you too, Shelley. You know, Mr. Jefferson is quite a businessman. Oh, really? And Mr. Thompson? He had to leave. Be careful, please. Good morning. Julia. Julia. Good morning. Mama! Mama, Mr. Thompson left. What do you mean? Fat man left. He said so. Stop playing that stupid organ. We have to deal with more than just a wagon load of guns now. It looks like they're going to have to do away with anyone who can recognize them. We'll have to be doubly careful. Frenchie and I seem to get on each other's nerves. We already plan to get together for another round. If you're selling tickets, let me know. Anyway, he'll make arrangements with Thompson if there isn't anyone better around. What do you mean? Figure it out. There has to be someone to transport those guns. Frankly, I'm curious. I have an idea who's going to show up. And the Indians seem strange that they've come all the way up here. Frenchy gets here, and the Indians break loose. Thomas? Do you think this whole story about the Indians is true? Uh, I don't really know. It could be. And don't forget, they tried to get away with Sarah. Yeah. I've been wondering. Do you know what makes those papers so damned important? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, there's something that concerns you a little closer. Sarah's in love with you, George. I'm very sorry, 
Sure, you don't feel the same, right? Well, Thomas, you see... Yeah, I know, I know, Julia, but don't trust her. Ah, it's none of my business. Anyway, those papers, gold, a gold mine, George. A gold mine? That girl's in trouble, and I don't see her getting out, unless she manages to find her father in Laredo. And their troubles won't be over even then, by any means. What makes you think so, Thomas? Let's hear it. Mm, a gold mine causes too much trouble. I hope at least Sarah's father will sell it to a combine or cartel or to the state. And if he's smart, that's what he'll do. I'm worried about tonight. We better take turns on guard. I just had an idea. You wanted to go to Laredo on newspaper work, right? Huh. Well, you have an exclusive on all this, too. Sure. But could I write it? If you keep your gun in your hand, I'm positive you can. Well, I didn't think I'd ever find you. I was getting a little frightened riding alone out here. Good afternoon. Come ride with me for a little while. I'd feel much safer if you were around. Oh, by the way, did you hear that Thompson left last night? It was bound to happen. First of many. Shall we go? Take care, George. Be dark in two hours. Over to the old farmhouse. I'll race you. Come on. George. He doesn't need that. Honestly, I am unarmed. And harmless as well. Matter of fact, I'm not so certain. No, no, it's too much. It's too much. It's more than a man should be asked to put up with. <laughs> you grumbling again? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm doing. Who are you mad at today, Jimmy? That Ned, that no good shirking loafer. I've got to do all this. But he's so small. He may not be very tall, but he's the biggest loafer that ever lived. If I get my hands on him, I'll... <laughs> Let me help you, mister. I'll take the saddle off. No, no thanks. i better start using the old arm again. Then I think I'll go in for a beer. I really need one. <laughs> What are you doing there? I was waiting hey. for you. What is it? Hey, Ned, you in on this too? Martinez is looking for you everywhere. You're a lawman, aren't you? Ned found some papers. We thought we should give them to you. Looks like they're about Frenchie and that lady Julia. We've been thinking all along that you were a sheriff or something. And no one was supposed to recognize me. How's that? <laughs> eh, nothing, nothing. Thanks a lot, Ned. I'll remember it. That's all right. Any time. You think you can be trusted? We're blood brothers. Look at my wrist. Indian style, eh? That's right. That's fine, then. Come on, let's send to the horses. Five dollars on odds. How much? Five. Why, that too much? No, no, so much. But I tell you, I've got to leave. I understand that, Dr. Gordon, but there's nothing I can do about it. As far as I'm concerned, you can leave when you want to. But how? We've got to wait for the all clear from the army. Yes, of course, I see that. But still, it seems strange that nothing can be done about it. The conference will have started already. Is the conference more important than your skin? Ned, but... Ned, Ned, what the hell are you doing? Get busy downstairs like you were supposed to. Leave that stuff be. Forget it. Oh, Lord, Lord, he's going to ruin me. You see that? Something new every day. He never does anything, and when he does, it's a disaster. I'll leave that stuff. Right I'll you get you whiskey and some Much better for you. <laughs> well, it must be your lucky day, Jefferson. Hey, is anyone there? Hurry, please. We got a wounded man out here. Who is it? My name's Hal Anderson. What happened? 
And that's my brother, Bob. And Fred's been shot. Hurry. Dr. Gordon, come on. There's a man out here who needs you. Coming. Here I am. Who did it? Indians? Don't rightly know. Someone easy, fired at us from behind the hill and we ran out easy, of there. Fellas. It like the window. Uh, they didn't here. come after us, thank God. Be careful. Uh, here. There. That's better. It's an ugly wound. He's lost a lot of blood. Let's get him upstairs. Yeah. Take it easy, son. Where's the stable? Uh, right around the corner. Good, right. Bob, take care of the horses, will you? Okay. Pretty serious. Can we question him, Doctor? Maybe he saw who it was. I doubt very much if he'll regain consciousness. He's lost too much blood. It's only a question of minutes, I'm afraid. Too bad. I was hoping we could learn something useful. Now we won't know if we're going to be attacked, and if so, by whom. It's a shame, really. Soon you'll be able to question him. I saw immediately that he was only pretending to have lost consciousness fully. And I'm sure it's better if only you are here to question him when he comes to. Yes. I'm quite aware who you are, Marshal. And I'm aware who the others are. <laughs> a wagon with the guns is in the woods. It's well camouflaged. But don't worry, I left three men standing guard. We were on our way over when we realized someone was following us. It was that guy. I winged him. Thought I'd bring them along. I think if he ever wakes up and we can get him to talk, he could be pretty useful. Could tell us who sent him. Who is he? I don't know. I just call him Fred so they would think he was our brother. We'd better lose no more time. We'll act immediately. We must see about that damned newspaper man and the marshal. Then clear up the cargo of guns. Then we must get our hands on the girl. The girl? What girl? What do you mean? Gold. That's what I mean. Gold. Now, this, this Bob, who is he anyway? He's one of my men, and a good one. Don't worry about him. He's keeping an eye on the prisoner. So don't worry. Very well. Now then, listen to this and get it straight. Écoutez. What? Yes, yes. They hid the guns about five miles from here. Three men on guard. I, I got too near. Wasn't looking. They, they got me. They. I'm afraid the shot I gave them's worn off. But perhaps you can try again later on in the evening. Doctor, hmm? I'm going to have to go outside. Hope I make it. Please go downstairs. Keep an eye on the women, and above all, on Sarah. Here. Hope you can use it. It's heavier than a scalpel.
Good work. Go on. I love you, George. You never know. It's so beautiful that we found each other again. You know I love you. George, you've got to find those papers. You've got to. That man is a monster. You must believe me. You'll use them to ruin me. And in the meantime, he blackmails you. Now, don't worry. I'll get them for you. And you'll burn them? Of course. Uh. For four days, my head's been spinning with papers, documents, all important. Who else wants them, George? No, not yours. They're some other ones. Whose? Sarah's. Oh. It's night already. We'd better go. No, not yet. Please. One more kiss. We really must, darling. It's late. There's a long way to go, and I'm afraid. Afraid? That's not like you. something to do while we're waiting for him. Let's make the little girl talk. The papers we want are here, and the little girl is going to tell us exactly where. Then, I'm afraid, we have to get rid of our young friend, the reporter. And everyone else, as a matter of fact. Everyone? Of course. Come here, please. Come on. Hello. Now then. Here you are. Where are the papers to the mine? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you look like your bones are fragile. Speak. Or I shall have to break uh, them. Uh, I swear, I don't know. It would be better if you spoke. Give up the gold mine, little girl, or you'll wind up like your brother and your mother. All right, untie them and take them away. George, hurry with the horses. I'll be waiting for you in my room.
What happened to you? The bastard jumped in there and ran away. Which way? Well, you probably went out to the barn. We better tell Quinn. Come on. He got away from us. He's probably with that marshal now. Damn it. Send me Jefferson. You take his place. You get over to the other window, sharpen up your aim, and shoot straight if you want to go on living. Hurry! George doesn't have the things, Quinn. He would have given them to me. So the Marshal has them? Yes, obviously. In the meantime, we can start in on the girl. The gold mine's more important. You make her talk. You're better than I am. Come on, talk. Where are they? Speak up. No, I don't know where they are. I told you. You have them. I don't have them. Not anymore. Where are they? The Marshal has them. Hey, you're lying. No, I told you. I told you. Uh, all right, stop it. Perhaps she's telling the truth, finally. Everything's all right outside. Anderson's on guard. What's happened here? We have the information. <laughs> the Marshal has the papers. And as you know, possession is nine points of the law. If you want to get out of here, I won't stop you. You can even have the load of weapons. But if you want to stay in the operation, you'll have to help us get rid of them. The old fellow also has all the papers and documents about our organization. What do you think about bringing over the three men who've been keeping guard on the wagon? Friend? I think it's ridiculous to be afraid of a wounded old man and a young cub who isn't dry behind the ears yet. We are five against one. We can take care of them later. So what do we do? Go get them in the barn? No. Let them make the first move. The young one's sure to break in to try and save the girl and the others. We are in the better position. Inside and armed. Buzzy. Don't try to talk. Just, Just tire yourself out. out. Let me see what I can do yeah. about this. Just that your rifle over there. That's better. I never did feel too sure about a cold. You've got to hold on, Thomas. You've got to. Keep your eye on the door. Try and take it easy now. I'm gonna go see if I can get the doctor, all right? Everybody. George. George. Take my place. Now you're the marshal. Take the star. And swear you'll get them. I swear.
my ladder. I hope it holds you. They're all down below. Thanks. Ned! Have you seen anything? Nope. How about you? No, it's too dark. I know he's out there somewhere. What am I supposed to do? Take the girl upstairs. Tie her down, then get out on the roof. I want no surprises from up there. Uh, that won't do any do good. Do as I... I tell you. Don't waste any more time. Bob, get into the kitchen and keep a watch on the doors and windows. Go. Throw down the guns, and do it slowly. That's fine, Frenchie. And now let's have the other one. I'm Jed Walker, Federal Marshal. Quite the little man. If you were as brave as you act, and you aren't, mon ami, you'd come over here without the rifle. But you'd never dream of doing that, because you're just a frightened little boy trying to put on a show. Give yourself up, Quinn. I represent the law. <laughs> oh, the law. How can a little bastard like you represent the law? You've always run away from me. Throw away your little toy rifle. Let's see what you can do with your bare hands. With any of your filthy, cheating tricks. But why am I even talking? It will take a man to do that. all over, my boy. I'm going to carry your stupid head on a silver platter up to Julia. She deserves such a trophy.
George! George! Oh, darling. My love. I saw everything from the window and I was afraid to fire. If I had, I might have hit you. Oh, George! 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 Monster, George, you mustn't... <laughs> <laughs> 